Um, I'm going to very quickly run through the, um, the uh, clinical out outcomes and some of the uh, emerging longer-term safety data that we have with bronchial thermoplasty. Um, I've got some conflict of interest listed here. Um, now, I was lucky to be involved in um, both the AIR, the RESA, and the AIR-2 trial, but I have to say I first heard about bronchial thermoplasty over lunch at uh, St. Joseph's Hospital in Hamilton in Canada uh, when John Miller and Jerry were talking about this procedure in 1995, and uh, I remember being skeptical at the time. And it's really a testament to their hard work and the hard work of asthmatics and now Boston Scientific that we're where we are now with a viable treatment uh, that's being done in many countries. Now, the clinical trial program has been well thought through and logical, and it started with a 16-patient limited center Canadian feasibility study with mild, uh, milder asthma predominantly and with a physiological outcome measure, so a surrogate outcome measure. And having established uh, or, or got some evidence of safety and efficacy, then uh, went on to the AIR trial, which was a controlled trial, an untreated control group uh, with clinically relevant outcome measures, uh, symptoms and mild exacerbations and lung function. Uh, then um, to a more severe group of patients, uh, limited numbers, uh, and finally, having identified probably the optimum population, um, a, a very important and in many ways unique study where uh, active treatment was compared with uh, bronchoscopic sham treatment in a blinded fashion. So I'm going to run through the, the, the final study particularly, but briefly the others. Uh, so the AIR trial, which was the first um, control trial, uh, involved uh, 99, 109 patients were randomized one-to-one uh, -to, -one to control, uh, which was simply observation without bronchoscopy and um, bronchial thermoplasty. This was a population that were taking inhaled steroids and long-acting beta agonists, and they had to have good objective evidence of variable airflow obstruction. And what's more, they had to deteriorate when the long-acting beta agonist was uh, removed for two weeks. And the data shown in the graph here uh, is described as mild exacerbations, but it's really a composite symptom score, I think, more than exacerbations. And this was assessed during a two-week baseline uh, period before treatment, and then at three, six, and 12 months, uh, uh, each time after long-acting beta agonist withdrawal. And you can see that the number of uh, mild exacerbations experienced by the patients uh, was significantly reduced uh, with bronchial thermoplasty compared to control treatment. Um, there were uh, a few mild exacerbations, uh, but overall uh, improvement in measures of asthma control maintained for the 12 months, uh, no deterioration in FEV1, and some improvements in peak flow. Uh, uh, shown here. And this is data at baseline and three months on long-acting beta agonists. And the data on the right is uh, at baseline three, six, and 12 months off long-acting beta agonists. And you can see that morning peak flow and uh, uh, some rescue beta, ag beta 2 agonists used tended to improve with active treatment uh, there was a trend to improvement in airway responsiveness and uh, uh, no change in FEV1. Uh, there were some significant adverse events in the immediate peri-treatment period, uh, which resulted in six hospitalizations in four treated patients, but during the equivalent time, uh, two patients in the control group were hospitalized as, as well. The second study, which I, I was uh, more heavily involved in, uh, looked at a more severe population, uh, similar treatment requirements, mainly differing uh, in symptoms and in lung function. And these were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to control, exactly the same as the control group in the 
air study or active bronchial thermoplasty. And here the benefits of treatment seemed larger. Um, so we had a significant and quite marked reduction in uh, short-acting beta-2 agonist use, uh, uh, which was sustained through the study. Um, we had an improvement in FEV1 and uh, a change in asthma-related quality of life, which was significant, and a, a, a significant change in asthma control questionnaire, so a symptom questionnaire. And by and large, these improvements were maintained for a year, uh, even after an attempt was made to withdraw oral steroids. This was a group of patients that, uh, where a significant number were taking oral steroids. Uh, but on the downside, there was a bigger safety signal in this population with more severe asthma, with seven hospitalizations occurring in four patients, uh, and none occurring in the control group. Uh, and amongst the problems that we encountered in this study particularly, but also once in the earlier study, was low bar collapse involving the uh, treated lobe. Uh, the AIR-2 was a pivotal trial, and this, uh, as I've already said, was a sham-controlled, double-blind trial. Uh, Two-to-one randomization to active treatment. The population were taking inhaled steroids on long-acting beta agonists, but they were slightly less severe than the RESA group, so where they were moving back towards the AIR group. Uh, this involved 30 centers in six countries and just under 300 patients followed up for a year, and the actively treated population have been followed up uh, beyond the year for five years' safety data. This is the baseline demographics. I want to particularly highlight um, a few characteristics. Uh, first, they, have very, they are very hyper-responsive, these patients, with a geometric mean PC20 of 0 0.27, 0 0.3 milligrams per mil. So this is a group with very twitchy airways. Um, and they're having a lot of symptoms despite really high-intensity treatment. Uh, this is the uh, main outcome of active treatment. And the primary outcome in this study is shown on the left, the AQLQ. Um, and this started out at 4.3. Low numbers is bad AQLQ in uh, the group. So you can see that there was a huge... Uh, improvement seen in the sham treated population but the improvement with active treatment was significantly larger uh, over the year following treatment um, so a significant improvement in primary outcome uh, and unexpectedly um, we didn't really expect this from the earlier data uh, there is a reduction in exacerbations, and particularly those resulting in ER visits and hospitalizations. Um, the ER visit reduction was very statistically significant, so uh, um, good evidence of uh, benefit. So just to summarize the finding, 79% uh, of treated patients achieved uh, a more than 0.5 point increase in AQLQ, which is a regarded as a clinically important change versus 64% with sham. And the beneficial effects persisted across 12 months. Uh, there was 32% decrease in severe exacerbations and 84% reduction in ER visits for respiratory symptoms and a 73% reduction in hospitalizations because of respiratory problems. And because of that, there was less time off work or school and less disruption. Uh, we saw no unanticipated device-related adverse events or deaths, and uh, uh, there were reassuring long-term safety data. Um, first of all, the uh, effects on exacerbations seem to be sustained over two years. Um, this is data from all patients, sham and uh, control at baseline. Uh, with just over 50% having uh, had an exacerbation, and you can see the proportions are reducing with time. <clears throat> this was a huge undertaking, this study, and involved 850 bronchoscopies done in patients with severe asthma. And prior to this, there were, we, we bronchoscoped patients with asthma with some trepidation. So this 
did provide uh, important new information on the safety of bronchoscopy, and of course it was more than bronchoscopy, uh, in patients with some, what could be quite significant asthma with a lot of airway hyperresponsiveness. And very reassuringly, we didn't see serious problems like pneumothorax, ventilation, and no evidence of focal airway stenoses. Uh, there were more respiratory adverse events uh, reported in the immediate peri procedure period in those that received active treatment, but these were typically short lived and not too significant. And, and uh, were offset by this very significant reduction in exacerbations uh, after the active treatment period. This is a summary of five year safety data from the AIR trial, uh, uh, and the control population were followed for three years. And we, we are seeing no evidence of uh, a rebound increase in adverse events uh, following treatment. Uh, when asked whether they would have the procedure again or whether they would recommend it to a member of their family or friends, uh, the vast majority said uh, definitely yes or probably yes, and very few regretted their decision to have treatment. Now, um, I'm going to take the liberty of presenting a case just to finish off because um, we all, all people that did this procedure had cases that particularly uh, made an impression. Um, this is mine. Uh, he's a, a patient I'd struggled with for some time, an agricultural worker, male, uh, with a lot of symptoms despite high intensity treatment and using a lot of short acting beta 2 agonists at worst. A uh, great deal of variable airflow obstruction, um, very bronchodilator responsive, and very twitchy. And uh, he's not actively, he doesn't have a corticosteroid responsive pattern of airway inflammation, and predictably had no response to prednisolone. So his treatment options were limited. Um, Post thermoplasty, he uh, markedly, reports markedly reduced symptoms. His airway responsiveness uh, has been normal, and peak flow variability is also within normal limits. And he, importantly for him, he's reporting much less salbutamol use, and he's much more active. Now, Leicester, where I work, is a, is a curious setup because we have a very industrial city, but it's surrounded by um, farm, farmland and farm countries, and uh, my patient came from one of the uh, farming villages around Leicester and they all have very odd traditions and uh, uh, the particular tradition in this village was to have a very rough game of rugby between the two villages and um, a, a cask of beer was left midway between the two villages and the team that got that cask of beer back to their village won and there was no holes barred. And my patient had never been able to participate in this annual event. This is a picture from the local newspaper with him holding up the cask of beer which he managed to bring back to his village. So a particularly good outcome for him. Thank you very much.